the Turners Novices Chase. That's where we start. We don't have to and spend long on this, Matt. Mighty Potter, job done. Mighty Potter, a certainty for Matty Batchelor. Steve Mullen. Bambridge is a certainty for me. Do you really think so? Uh, well, I really, uh, you don't want to have certainty as a Cheltenham, do you? But I really fancy him, yeah. I think, I think this will be ideal. OK, yeah. Bambridge for Steve Mullen, Temple Gate. Yeah. Cobden says you do have certainties. He's already given us about three. Oh, yeah. um, what happens here, Harry? Look, I think Mighty Potter will be very hard to beat, but um, I ride a horse called Stage Star in this race. Um, I think after his last run, he's proven over course and distance, um, which is a huge thing at Cheltenham. I already know why I'm going to ride him. I'm going to make the run in, make plenty of use of him. He's a horse that's not short of speed, but he's got plenty of stamina as well. Um, and I think... Well, it says on here he's 12 to 1, so if that's what he is priced out, I think he's a great each-way bet. OK, stage star for Harry. Not surprisingly, he rides it. Lily, um, towards the mock of the market here, Mighty Potter, of course, was very impressive last time. He does have one or two if he jumps occasionally. Um, and Bambridge, funny enough, I look quite like Bambridge in the arc all myself, running on off a strong pace, but um, is the one that catches your eye. Sir Gerhard, I think, will go here. I think it's like I don't really I wouldn't really have an opinion on this one to be honest. Yeah, okay, move on. Don't worry about it. I'm a I'm no, I'm a mighty Potter fan as well. I do think his jumping's a bit iffy, but if you want someone to sort him out, Davy Russell, the king of Cheltenham, no offense, Harry. Uh, but the king of Cheltenham is your man. And uh, the wily Russell will get Mighty Potter home, I think. Right. Oh, we've got the champion chase winner running also in the Ryan Air Chase. I mean, Shishkin. Odds on for the Ryanair chase at 250. Um, Steve, let's go straight to you. Shishkin is, is obvious after his yep. last effort, but is there anything we can put up each way against him? Well, Jan Adil's the obvious each way choice. Um, second last year, good run at Goran last time. Um, I suppose there is the slightest chance that Shishkin can't back up what he did last time, but uh, after 26 days, is it, I think? Yeah. Um, and obviously he's come out of Ascot badly before, but I don't think that'll happen this time. Um, but I do like Jan Adil. Um, you can bet without the favourite or place only. Um, Blue Lord was a bit disappointing. Um, last time could, could bounce back, but I think second last year, Jan Adil can fill the same spot again, I think. OK, Harry, will you ride Pick Dory here? No, I don't think he's going for this race. I'm fairly certain if I do Hitman? have a ride, it'll be Hitman, who's oh. 22 to 1. Shall we move on now? He's, mm -hmm. a bit of, he, 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 he's probably not good enough to win, Matt. Um, but he could sneak in as an each-way bet. But um, I think Shiskin is a very worthy favourite. I wouldn't be afraid if he ran seven days before this race. I think uh, Henderson and de Bourneville are a fantastic team. This horse has got plenty of class. I thought he was back to his best at Ascot last time out, and he will take a lot of beating. OK, that is... Um, yeah, as, as with Hitman, actually... I, Funnily enough, I, I think he is good enough to win it, but I'm just not sure whether he really shows us all his talent all the time. Well, he, he, he um, obviously, they declared the fact that he um, had a little bleed last time at Newbury when he was slightly disappointing. But uh, if he bounced back and showed his best form, he could be an each way, an each way bet at 25 to 1. OK, I was lucky enough to go and see Michael O'Leary last week for ITV. And... Um, I, th I think as an, uh, in each way bet against Shishkin, I wouldn't put you off Fury Road. At the end of the day, he was third behind Gallop and Deschamps and Statler. That's not bad form. And with conflated not running, he's 10 to 1 at the moment for the sponsors of the race. Um, I think he will run well. But I, I look, I, I, Shishkin was in the champion chase. I think he'd win that. If he's in the Ryanair, he'd win that. He, he'd win anything he wants because he's just better than most of them. Uh, the only horse he might not beat is Constitution Hill, but he'd probably win that as well. Um, right, Batch? Yeah, Shishkin for me. Shishkin? Each way, a bit of Golor, Jamie Snowden's. Might ride him for a place and nick a bit of money. Galor? Yeah. Yeah, not Golor. Galor. 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 Um, Liddy? Shishkin. Shishkin, easy. Right, that's simple. Shishkin wins that. Simple. Let's move on. We've got to rattle through a few of these and... If the panel are just all in agreement on certain things, that's fine. They won't be all in agreement in the stairs hurdle, that is for sure, though. Uh, Blazing Carl, there's a slight fitness doubt now about the favourite. Um, 
Personally, I wouldn't believe anything that comes out of Charles Burns's <laughs> stable or any of the comments about any horse from that yard. So I'd just wait and see. But I certainly wouldn't believe quotes about whether he's well or not well. Um, Steve, what do you fancy? Uh, I'd love a bit of rain for tea hoopoo. Is that what you say? Um, th on soft ground, I think, would be, you know, that word certainty again, I suppose. But even on um, better conditions, I think the longer trip will help. Um, and I'm not deserting Paisley Park for a place either. I Aren't think you? course form is everything. And I think I wouldn't be surprised to see him get into third. That was 16, is it 16 to 1 something? He'd like be that? big price, Paisley. You yeah, can get in 14, 16, yeah. I think for a third, with, with fitness doubts over or injury doubts over a couple of the others. Uh, I could easily see him running, up, running on into third. Yeah, there is some, some bad value in it. I mean, classical dream. If everyone doesn't know by now, he's not a stare at this trip. I don't know when you'll ever know it. Harry, if you could ride a horse in this, which one would it be? I think I'd ride Blazing Cow. I know he's the favourite, but I think he's a very good horse. I, I can't have Tia Poo. I'm not sure about him. I think Marie's Rock is she'd have a very, very good chance. She's definitely our best chance of winning the race this side of the water. Um, but, but one horse in the race that's been slightly disappointing since last year would be Flooring Porter. Um, Gavin Cromwell, brilliant trainer. He'll make sure he's in top class form. And if Danny Mullins has it his own way in front this year, I think he'll be very dangerous. OK. I'm just sticking with the defending champion, incidentally, Florian Porter, because I just think he's different gravy here. Danny Mullins will bang him out on the front end. They'll never catch him. Lily, which one tickles you? Oh, I'd love to ride Paisley Park, but I think... Yeah, hard work. Yeah, he would be hard work, but I think he's... I, I just... I'd love to ride him. It's a cool horse to ride. Uh, but I, I do think, you know, Florian Porter's got a good chance. You know, he's won it the last two years running, and if he goes from the front and steals away, I think... They have a good fight up the hill. Yeah, he's, he's had his little problems, but I spoke to Danny Mullins. He says he is back. Um, Batch? Home by the Lee for me, Matt. I just Home think by the Lee. Beat Flooring Porter last time. Yeah, I think Navin never surprised when he won, and then he, he backed it up at Leopardstown. So I just think he's a bit better value and wouldn't rule out Flooring Porter, but home by the Lee for me. Well, it's very kind of you not to rule out the defending dual winner. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to, gets past You have past to cover you. all bases, Matt. Even now, nothing gets past you, Batch. That's what I love absolutely. about you. Absolutely. Right. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. Right, let's go on. Is uh, Just just double check the last race. Yeah, that's the fourth one, isn't it, on Friday? Right, let's go on to the Friday and see what we can find there, team, because we have still got all the handicaps to get through, which I know our panel have been particularly excited about, um, especially you, Cobb, and all those nickels not-offs. Um, right, let's start with the Triumph Hurdle in the 1.30 Friday. Triumph Hurdle, of course, is not the race it once was when it had loads of runners and it was great fun because we diluted it. Um, Lossy Mouth will, for many, be a banker here. I've done an unlucky second last time, Steve. Are you a Lossy Mouth fan? Um, <coughs> not particularly, no. I'm more of a blood, blood Destiny fan Are you? for this. Yeah, I, um, I know big step up in class here, but again... If you like times, did a very good time last time. Um, I think, again, we'd love a bit of rain for him, but we'll see how he gets on in the quicker conditions. I just think he's got an awful lot of class uh, and got a lot more to come. Um, you've got comfort zone in there as well with, with, with every chance. Um, again, each way, price available for that one. But I, I do think Lossy Mouth, yeah, deserves to be right up there, but I think Blood Destiny will just be a bit better on the day. Yeah, at the moment, Willie Mullins has the top three in the market. Um, it'll be obviously interesting to see which one Paul Townend ends up on, Harry. But as you said to us earlier, the, the number one rider doesn't always pick the right horse. No, he certainly doesn't. But I'm, um, I'm a Lossy Mouth fan. Uh, she obviously gets a Phillies allowance. So that means that, that because she's a mare, a girl, she has less weight than the gelding, which is Blood Destiny, uh, who is the other top horse in the market. Um, I'm very much a fan of hers. Willie Mullins was quite critical of Paul Townend's ride on her the last day. He, he said that she was too far back and he gave her a hard race, but I think she's a very, very good filly and she'll take all the beating. Batch? I think it, Paul would definitely ride Lossy Mouth. She, she wins for me. Leopard's Town, mistakes. Ugh. Listen, he's travelling. One made a mistake, concertina effect. He had to go around the outside and she showed huge engine to finish where she did. 
and she wins it for me. Yeah. Is there pressure in these occasions with the owner, Harry, do you think? Like, he's got so many good Rich Richie ones. I don't think so. I mean, when you're Paul Town and you've, you, you, you've, you've got to ride the best horse in the race, haven't you? I suppose it's the same for me, for Nichols. I want to be riding the best horse in the race. You always know, or is the one, it's the one owner in there that you think, oh, I've got to ride so you. To be honest, it'd be, if anyone was to sway my decision, it would be Nichols rather than the owner. But um, I think I think Town then ride lossy mouth in this occasion. And, and look, obviously, Rich Rich, he's got lots of horses. He spends loads of money. But in Close Sutton or wherever Willie Mullins trains, they've got lots and lots of millionaires down through there, haven't they? And you, you can't keep them all happy. You've got to ride the best one on the day. Do you ever go up to Old Trafford to what Man U? No. Never? I've been there once. Not right. a football fan. Right. Did you ride his horse, though, just to do that? Uh, no, I didn't. I, so I got invited after Clan de Zobo won the King George the first time when I obviously rode him. I didn't get invited the second time when Sam won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just as well you weren't there for the Liverpool game the other day. Uh, right. Um, uh, what a great result that was. I mean, I hate both, but it was just terrific. Um, Lily Pynchon, which of these... Is your mount in the trial hurdle? I'm going to say the same as everyone else. Lost your mouth. I think, you know, after her last run, the way she just stayed galloping, I think she, I think it just, hopefully she improves in that. Yeah, she did. I thought she was really unlucky the other day. And I expect her to reverse the form, uh, f hopefully for Rich Ritchie. Certainly he gave me three that he really was looking forward to and lost your mouth. Uh, was one of those three. Albert Bartlett comes up at 2.50, looking at the staying hurdlers here, over nearly three miles, and Corbett's cross for Emmett Mullins is going to be very much to the fore in the betting here. Um, I, I, I like another Jigginstown horse in here, Favori de Chambdou, who's been impressive at big, uh, at, at, in big distances at lesser grade. Um, Batch, is this a race you've studied in your... Slumber at night. <laughs> <laughs> I quite liked Hidden Valley Lake. I think there's a bit of improvement to come. And, yeah, I just think it gives, offers you a bit of value. So Hidden Valley Lake for me. And the Bob Ollinger Colours. Bob uh, Ollinger Colours. Yeah, Steve? Sorry, Chappers, I'm on the same one as you in this. Uh, Are you? Uh, yeah. Um, Don't say sorry. <laughs> we're, we're the only team members. Of well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. the lim the limit. Well, it's carrying a lot of weight with you two, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> well Fortunately, we're not riding it. No. Fortunately, <laughs> at least we can count, eh, hey, Batch? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But you have to you count how many bottles of straight hand got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, is it? Right. Three hundred and thirty-five. <laughs> Jealousy is a horrible thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That's, that's well, I'm jealous said. of you looking like an umpa lumpa. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm surprised when you came on the stage and didn't have the tune. Umpa lumpa. Right. Come on, Security, can you take it away now? Get back to the racing, come on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Very funny. <laughs> yes, Lizzie, I'll give you his number straight after. All uh, right, um, Cobbers, um, you can stop laughing too. Right, so I've got a ride in this, uh, and that horse is Stay Away Faith. Okay, Lily. <laughs> Great no, honestly, you want to listen to this one. This horse is a good horse. I promise you that now. So I rode him at Newbury first time out, and he was not fit at all. He beat a half-decent horse of skeletons in second called He's a Geezer, who has come out and won since, I think. Um, he's won a couple of races this year. So anyway, this horse went to Doncaster last time out, ran in a grade two, um, ran a lovely race, finished second. Um, I just think he is a solid stayer. I won the race. It was my first ever Cheltenham Festival winner this race. Um, so... This horse is definitely better than I won the race years ago. Um, he's very, very straightforward. He's a good jumper. And I think at 20 to 1, he's probably 25 in places, um, he's a good each way bet. I do honestly really fancy this horse. Look, the top of the market is all filled with Irish horses, right? And we don't know how good some of them are. But this horse is certainly very, very smart. Um, and I think at 20 to 1, 25 to 1, he's a great each way bet. OK, good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs> good luck. I want to come back here the week after Cheltenham and prove this Chapman wrong. Yeah. How terrible he is. You'll still be looking for him and Grenatine. Uh... <laughs> 
me like Cobden Five when is it Cheltenham Nichols back with a bang. I can see it now. I wouldn't like to be your missus. You are an adventurous mind. You really do. Uh, right. <laughs> right, Lily, try and bring us back to some sort of reality here. The problem is Harry's on his fourth Peroni and he's just gone crazy. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't like to be Clanders Obo in the morning. Come on, son! Han! Or his missus tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Um, Lily, you don't have to have a strong opinion about this. They're all Irish at the top of the market, really. Um, if you don't fancy anything, just say. But it's very hard, I think, when the, with these Irish horses. I hope to be honest. Yeah, leave I it. Never clue. Leave it. Let's leave it. Let's go to the Gold Cup, which is the biggest, biggest race of the meeting. And many people think that this is a brave man's game. Harry Cobden, are you going to bring it back for Great Britain? Hopefully. Um, you spent two days looking for the fray for grenadine, and finally you've got a horse that now you can find. So, so there are plenty of doubts with this horse regarding punters and various other critics. Um, I haven't actually heard Chapman's side of the story with, regarding Brave Man's game, but <laughs> the trip, that's where we'll start. He went four mile round bloody Kempton on Boxing Day because he went 10 wide <laughs> on the way around, so he clearly stays the trip. The track, well, he was never right when he ran in the Ballymore first time out, so that's probably a bit of an unknown, but I promise you, when you ride this horse, he's a very, very balanced horse. He gives you a lovely feel, great jumper. I don't think the track will be an issue. The issue will be whether he's good enough or not on the day. Um, I'm confident that he's the best horse in this country. Um, he proved that Boxing Day when he, when, he, when he turned up and ran an absolute stormer and won the King George. It's just whether we're good enough to beat Gallop and Deschamps and a Plutard. Um, and Statler and Noble Yates. Statler and conflated. And yeah, but I, I, look, I, I think if a Plutard turns up, he's going to be hard to beat. And Gallop and Deschamps is obviously the young horse on the block, which is winning everything in Ireland. But I promise you, this horse is the best horse that we have in Ditchett at the moment. And I wouldn't get off him for any other. He's... He's a serious, serious horse. Nichols is training for the race this year. Normally, he's going to Cheltenham on his fourth or fifth run. He's going there this year, fresh as paint. He started off in the Charlie Hall, went to the King George. He's been given loads of time. He's fit and well, and he's as strong as he's ever looked. And um, I'm just really excited to ride him, and I think he's got a great chance. I hope our news desk are writing down all this. It sounds very positive, a brave man's game. Yep. Bringing it home, Gobden. Or is he, Steve? Is Templegate going to put the mockers on the big British hope? Well, he's definitely the best British horse, isn't he? So he's no just about the only no, one. I'll, I'll give him that. No, but, and he wasn't stopping on, on Boxing Day, was he? No, no. Absolutely just got not. going. Absolutely just wasn't stopping. Going. It's just uh, a Plutar. If a Plutar <laughs> comes back anything like last year, then I think he'll be too good. But it's a big if. But the big if means he's 8-1. to one. And if he's 8-1, to one, you've got to start getting very tempted, I think. Um, trust connections to get him right you know he was totally wrong at Haydock they got to the bottom of why he was wrong at Haydock um, had the setback around Christmas I know but we just saw it there winning last year I mean that was breathtaking and I could just it won't be as easy as that because you'll be a lot closer to him for a start but um, I could just see it happening again and at 8-1 to one, I think it's worth taking the risk that the team have got him back to somewhere close I mean other than that you've got Noble Yates he was a thorough stayer, absolutely no problem there, but obviously would draw the distance runner Aintree. Um, and I can't protect a rat's one of my cliff horses, so I'll have to have a little bit on him. Um, and Dan Skelton keeps saying he hasn't got him ready. Um, and I, I could see him running a lot better as well, and uh, given that he's 16 to 1 as well. He doesn't stay there, does he? Well, probably not, but again, he's another one who'd prefer it to be at Aintree. But um, I just think a Plutard's class will, will come to the top again. Well, Batch, you would have been a Gold Cup winner if you hadn't been jocked off. Um, I wasn't jocked off, to be fair. No. I'd lost the ride long before that. Yeah. <laughs> but if you could live that moment of glory, which one do you think you'd live it on here? I think Galloping Deschamps looks... I think he does stay. I think he will stay. But I do like the horse that chased him over in Ireland. The extra two furlongs is a big deal. And Statler will be chasing him at the end. And at 9-1... to one, I think it's a great each-way price, but for me, Gallop and Deschamps 
he does look the real deal. Yeah, of course. Scalapan came down last year against Bob Ollinger. With the benefit of hindsight, that has to be one of the worst Cheltenham Festival races ever run, other than Galloping to Shot. I mean, Bob Ollinger's been absolutely useless since. Um, but he did look that good that day. Which, which one's grabbed you, Lee? Galloping to Shot. Galloping to Shot. Yeah, I think he's a very smart horse. The thing about that's good about him is he seems to be able to front run, hold up, whereas, whereas Cobden has to hold up. He's setting a lot better as well now, Matt. You won't be front running. You tell me now you're, you could front run in the Gold Cup. You will not be front running. Yeah, I've got a brain so I'm, I'm, I'm following. <laughs> riding like the best horse in the race. He's settling a lot better now, Galloping. He's be. The what? He's settling a lot better, sir. Okay. I, I agree. I think Galloping is the class horse. I, I, if you, if for one that I think is just overpriced, ridiculous priced in many ways, I do think Manella Indo is a stupid 20 to 1 shot. I mean, he's won it and finished second. He's beaten Statler. Now, Statler was giving him eight pounds, but it was over two miles six, and Manila Indo is an absolute plodder. I see no reason why he's 20 to one and Statler eight to one. And just, I'm not saying Manila Indo is going to go and win it, but if you're backing a 20 to one shot, I think there are a lot worse 20 to one shots than Manila Indo. He's only just turned 10, so he's not ancient or anything. And, you know, he comes into this on the back of a win and having won it and finished second, he's 20 to one. I, I don't really understand his price. But where's, um, where's Brave Man's Game going to finish, Matt? Where are you going to finish? Yeah. I think you'll be fifth or sixth. Gosh. I'm not absolutely sure you're... You know what? I, I hope you'll take this as a compliment. I'm not sure you're slow enough for this. I th I'm not sure you're an absolute plodder. I think you've got almost too much class for a Gold Cup. That's why he's on the ITV that's panel and don't do any tipping anymore. That's what you're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not often on that, to be fair. <laughs> from from, from time to time. That. You can't just diss someone who doesn't agree with you all the time. Well, no, you're just wrong on this subject. He's going to run a right race and he's not... He's wrong on not a lot of subjects. Finished fifth or sixth. Not the whip. Um, <laughs> But no, not the before Brave Man's game went in the hurdle, I bet you were going around all the panels saying this is an absolute good thing. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. this horse is a different horse this year, and he will run his race. He will run his he race. He will run his race. I'm right. not saying he's going to win, but he will run his race. He will be there. If he's thereabouts turning in, he'll gallop up that hill. I think he'll run his race as well, and he'll be fifth or sixth. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Someone's okay. got to have faith. No, 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 exactly, yeah. Okay, so we're going to just quickly go on to the handicaps because we are running out of a bit of a time. I'm, I'm going to give you five for handicaps quickly that I just wrote down that I like. In the Ultima, I like Remastered. In the Boodles, I like the Moor Horse Perseus Way. Batch would know all about that one. Thought he was unlucky at Kempton the other day. In the Coral Cup, if he runs, I like St. Sam. In the Grand Annual, I really like Third Time Lucky. I think yeah. he's just about to peak once again, and he once upon a time looked as though he could be even be like a champion chase horse. And in the per temps, I like the boss's Oscar. So those are just a few handicappers. Steve, really, you're our handicap man. All season you've been watching. You are Templegate of the sun, sake. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows what's going to happen in the handicaps, it's you. Well, thanks very much for the build-up. Um, well, no, but it is the leading on... tipster position in yeah. the whole of the country. No pressure. You've got the greatest tipping job there is. Well, thank you very much. Forget bloody price-wise. He just has to look down a row of numbers <laughs> and see one that's out of sync and says, yep, that's mine. You have to really get the job done. Thank you very much. Come on, Temple Gate. Can, we, can I go on about Il Rodoto? What, what yeah, yeah, absolutely. Il Rodoto, yeah, I think he's got an absolute knocking chance in the plates. Uh, Irish Hill as well, can I ask you about Yeah, him? yeah, What's definitely. What's... Great form. There you go. We're, we're agreeing. Certainly, no, he's got a, bit. Yeah. He's got a couple of what, pounds. What's he'll he be top jump for jockey at this you know, rate. Coral Cup. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, he's 150 to 1 at the moment, but after this, you're going to be favourite. I fancy you on both of those. Uh, Maxim in the Per Thames final. No, okay. not Okay, against the bosses, Austin. And I hope Langadan finally wins the Martin Pipe. Langadan for the Hopefully, skills. he won't, but I hope he does. But he won't. <laughs> Aggressive <laughs> that would be, yeah, so there you Did go. Did you get all those? Right. Batch, anything in the handicaps? I've What's Gary one? Moore laid out? I've got one in the Ultima. Hold on, Marie Master wins that. Eh? Is no, it I don't Master? think he does. Oh. No. no, I think he does as faster, well. Faster or slower for Martin Brazil, I think that was called. He 
done the same last year. He had two runs before the Coral Cup, come and finished second over shorter trips. He's done the same this year. He's run over two mile over fences and two and a half mile over fences in grade ones. Very tenderly ridden last time at Ireland, in Ireland. Up to three mile, 12 to one shot. Sticks out like a sore thumb, Matt. Okay, thanks, Matt. Um, Cobbers, I mean, Nichols won't have too many, but any of the ones that Steve <coughs> mentioned that you really like? Um, do you know, I think my dark horse could be in the Fred Winter. Which is? Affidil. Affidil ran at, ran at Kempton the other day. No, uh, no, no one at Musselburgh. That was Rare Middleton. So, Affidil ran at Musselburgh, yeah? Affidil ran at Musselburgh and then yeah. was very disappointing about a week later when he ran at... Um, Somewhere else. Haydock. He's running off a mark of 123 or 4. I think he's very well handicapped and he's my dark horse for the race. Uh, okay. for, well, for the whole festival. Nichols got a great record in the Fred Winter. I'm not kidding you. Nichols took me to one side at Kempton last weekend whenever we were there. And he said, don't give up on Affidil. So there is a bit of a link there. Lily, you, you, you have a couple of rides, won't you? Yes. Which Tell us about anything you might be riding at Cheltenham and if you think you've got an each way squeak. Okay, Hector Jablex, I think he's got a right shout in the Temps um, network final. I think, I just think, well, his last win at Cheltenham was great. He went away from the last, galloping all the way to the line. Um, and then I think, thanks for the help in the same race, actually, it's quite a good shout from winning at Chepsey. Okay, brilliant. Um, so that's Hexter... Hexter Javalex. Hexter Javalex, that's the one. Okay, right. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I haven't prepped you to this. I want just a nap and the next best for Cheltenham from all of you. The winner and your next best. Batch has now got to count to two, so we'll come back to you, Batch. Okay. Okay. Let's start with Harry Cobden, your nap and your, your best ride and your next best ride, basically. Stick to yourself. Do, do, do I have to ride them, do I? Yeah, I think it's best. Yeah, I think we want the, the best oh. of Cobden. Oh. No? Okay. They want the bankers. Yeah. This doesn't say much for your rides, does it? Right, so um, <laughs> I'll be very, very confident that John Bond will win the Arkle. Okay. And you know, I'm bloody, bloody confident that Jerry Colomb will win the Brown Advisory. Okay, so Harry was allowed to choose two, and despite telling us how many good things he's on, well, none, no. of, none of his featured in the two. Our super duper tipster thinks I'll ride five winners, so. <laughs> okay, Batch, let's go to you then before we go to the super duper. I would have chose John Bond, but I go Constitution Hill and Lossy Mouth. <laughs> he's just chose John Bond. Have a day off. Well, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, home by the Lee and lost him out. Okay. Put it in a treble then. John Back. Bond, Constitution Hill, Honeysuckle. There you go. I'll have tell you what. Have 100 quid, have 100 quid treble on it. Have some kahunas. Come on. <laughs> Sitting there giving me the bullet. Yeah. 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 Uh, Batchy's done his best Mick Fitz impression there. He's gone, he's gone as hard as he can. <laughs> right. um, Steve? Uh, Bambridge and Ilete Tom. Bambridge, oh Ilete Tom. Bambridge in the two and a half yeah. miles. How long your contract case? last? 25 years. Jesus. <laughs> and uh, Lily Pinchin. Constitution Hill, just skim. You're going to give her any stick? Uh, no, 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 that's, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, geez. That's fine. No, you can only put up what you want. I will have Facil Vega as my nap. And I, I genuinely think Manella Indo is a silly price. So I'll go Manella Indo. Each way for the next best, obviously, it, it, to be in the frame. It will definitely beat Brave Man's Game, though. Absolutely, 100%. You can tell he does a panel for the bookmakers because he wants to give them all the money back. <laughs> <laughs> I watch some of your rides very carefully, and I, I know exactly where the money's going, Harry. Don't you worry. <laughs> 